This video is the ultimate guide to 1.20 Minecraft. Hello my friends, I'm Russell 9 back at again, and today I will be showing you guys everything you need to know about the 1.20 update, because this video is titled, The Ultimate Guide to 1.20 Minecraft. So first off, we are here, in the Cherry Forest biome. This biome is amazing, there are flower petals on the ground, it's just overall a wonderful place to be. But that is not the important thing, the important thing is not the biome, well actually, I guess it is. <laughs> the important thing is the biome, but the more important thing is the blocks. The blocks that you can craft from this wonderful biome. Don't think that I hate this biome. So, first off, we have the logs themselves. They look purplish on the outside, which is really cool. And then they have the pink interior. So if you strip them, they look pink, which is amazing. You've never seen pink cotton candy wood in Minecraft before unless you're playing modded. And I think I'm always all for new types of wood. You have the sapling, which I think it looks just absolutely amazing. It just looks uh, different than all the other ones. All the other ones are just a bush. This is more than a bush. It actually looks like a tree as an item. Next up, we have the trap door that looks kind of like a crafting table, to be completely honest. A glorified pink crafting table. Then we have the door, which has a very nice texture to it, similar to the crafting table. And I really like it. It has one big knocker right there. It's kind of like the spruce door, but pink. And I really like the design. Then you have a pink boat. Who doesn't love a pink boat? I love that. And then we have the hanging sign, which I think looks quite cool. But enough of the cherry forest biome. On to the next thing in the video, which is... And here we are, in a birch forest biome. And this little tiny block of terracotta and gravel is a trail ruin. This thing might not look like much, but inside of it you can find a ridiculous amount of stuff. You also will notice that it goes a ridiculous amount down. Like, I'm still busting through it. It's ridiculous how deep this thing goes. So if you find this on the surface, don't think, oh, it's nothing to look at. Dig down. There's so much more to it than meets the eye. But you might be thinking, Reptile 7, why would I want to go digging underground just for a bunch of terracotta? Well, it's because you can find suspicious sand and suspicious gravel. And then using the brush you crafted, using one copper ingot, one feather, and one stick, you can sift through it, and you can get some wonderful items. You get something junk like a candle, or you could get something good, like a pottery shirt. Some of the many loot you can get in, this, in these trail ruins are the music disc relic, the sniffer egg, and the pottery sherds. We'll move on to the sniffer in just a second, and relic I'm not going to play because copyright issues, the bane of my existence. <laughs> but as you can see, when you get these sherds, you just need to put four of them into a crafting table uh, in the correct order. What am I doing wrong? So you place these things in this order, then you will have a decorative pot. And then on each of the sides will be a different face. But in case you're thinking, oh, I only got one. Well, do not fret. For if you have at least three bricks, you can always craft another urn using just three bricks and one of them. The only problem with this is it only has something on one side. But I still think it's worth it because like it still looks quite good and it makes a very nice building block too. There are so many ways to build with these things and decorate your homes. And now on to what you're curious about, the sniffer egg. What is it? Why does it look like a block but it's smaller than a block? And why is it not round? Well, this is Minecraft. That's why it's not round like the item. But as for what you do with it, I believe it takes about 10 days for it to grow. And once it grows, it will grow into... A sniffer, which this thing is ridiculously large, like absurdly large. Look at this tree. In comparison, this thing is like, what, three blocks tall? It's almost the size of a ravager. It has a very long duck-like nose. Some, it keeps looking at me. Some tiny beady black eyes. A lot of shaggy fur, kind of like a yak. Purple feet and a green bush-like shell, I guess? Or maybe just more fur. I'm not sure. It kind of reminds me of a shaggy dog. But it's really cool. And if you leave it alone for enough time, or if you can get two of these, then you can breed them together, and then if you leave them alone for enough time, then they will snuffle around, like he's doing right now, perfect timing, they will snuffle around in the dirt, and hopefully give you something useful instead of just, uh, oh he did, and he will give you something like this, a pitcher pod, which I cannot plant on the ground, what I meant to say is I cannot plant on the ground unless I have hoed the dirt, then you can plant it, and then once it fully grows, once it is fully grown, instead of having just a, a glorified potato, <laughs> you will have a beautiful pitcher plant, which serves no purpose other than looking nice. 
And I think it does an amazing job at that. This could be used in like an alien biome that you created yourself, or literally just as a house plant. This looks amazing either way. And then you also have the torch flower, which despite its name, uh, does not emit light. And again, this looks nice. Less nice than the pitcher plant, and I feel like they should have like made it burn you if you touch it, or even just made it glow. Even this bee is dissatisfied with it. He's just like, oh, there's no pollen, it's just a little stick. Yeah, that's that's how I feel about this too, B. Now on to another mob that is very, very cool. And here he is. And here we have a camel. A wild camel in its natural habitat. Laying on the ground. Being a lazy, overly sized cat with a long neck and a long nose. Kind of like a giraffe. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is the camel. He looks quite nice in my opinion. He definitely looks like a camel. I've been wanting in Minecraft to add more mobs to the deserts for a very long time. If you equip a saddle onto him, boom, you can ride the guy. Because who doesn't want to ride a camel? He's quite slow unless you press space in which he yeets himself forward a distance of eight blocks, which is ridiculous. Woo! Also, there's also a way of making him travel faster. I've just forgotten it <laughs> because I've done no research leading up to this video. I am very, very dumb. This is really, really cursed. Very cursed indeed. But either way, they make an interesting mode of transportation. And as you can see, there are even two seats. So two people, if I had a second person, could ride on the camel at the same time, which is just an amazing feature that Good Times with Scar has wanted on minecarts for a ridiculous amount of time, and I personally agree with him. But enough about my personal rantings, let's go on to the next feature, which- Oh, never mind, if you double tap forward, you can run with the camel. That's how you run. You can run with a camel by double tapping forward. Anyway, enough about the camel, although I want- I could probably talk about him all day. We are now going to move on to something that I will need to dedicate an entire video about if you guys want. Our and here they are. So as you can see, we have 16 different armor trims all displayed on this wall, if you ignore these extra spaces that I left in for no logical reason. We have 16 total armor trims. Using these armor trims, if you were to combine an armor with an ore and one of these, you can make your armor decorated, depending on which pattern. I'm currently using the eye pattern, which is that one right down there, second from the end on the bottom, with which you can find in a stronghold. But each of these is found in a different location, and I might have to make a video about where you can find all of these. And I think they're a really cool addition because now you have just even more customization. You can upgrade your armor, make yourself look really, really cool, or really, really stupid. And then we move on to the parts of the templates that I hate, the uh, netherite sm upgrade smithing template. Now you need this in order to upgrade your armor and tools from diamond to netherite. And you can only find these in a Bastion's loot room. And then in order to duplicate this, as it takes to duplicate any of these, because once you use them, they're gone, it takes seven diamonds and one of a specific block. Why? Like, I love the armor trims, but it's absurdly expensive to use them. And for this, netherite was hard enough. You have to go mining for hours on end, first to get diamonds in the overworld, and then you have to go to the nether, explode a bunch of beds, and go through tunnels endlessly for hours on end until you end up finding your netherite, and then, oh, I have enough for a full set! Oh, but I need to find one of these and get more diamonds to upgrade my stuff! It's ridiculous! <sighs> I'm fine. I do not need psychiatric help. Either way, I have uh, very negative opinions on this item, but uh, let's swiftly move away from this and move into something that is a bit more interesting and less uh, likely to make me rant on and on. Which is they finally add in a new Minecraft head, the Piglin head, which is amazing. As you walk, the ears flap. I love it whenever they add new heads. I just absolutely love it. And uh, it's another way to make yourself look like a monster. And it doesn't end there. Now, using these mob heads that are ridiculously hard to get using only charge creepers, you can now put them onto a note block and play the noise of the mob, like the piglin. Mm -hmm. The ender dragon, which is obscenely loud. The wither skeleton, which is obscenely quiet. The skeleton, the, the zombie, and my favorite, the creeper. Imagine the pranks with this Oh, that's music to my ears. Oh, get out of my way, Mooshroom! Brood cow. Moosh. Thing. You die now. For interrupting my monologue! 
And now, while I chew on my delicious moosher meat, we shall move on to the next feature. And this next one is something that we've already had in Java for a ridiculous amount of time, but Bedrock hasn't. Oh, poor Bedrock. Well, no poor them no more, because now, using a shield, we can now put banners onto shields on Bedrock Edition, which is absolutely awesome. I love that they've added this, because this is one of my favorite features in the game. And now they've added it to both editions, which is great. The Craftmine server that I'm playing on, I'll put a link in the description to the first episode, will now have shields and banners. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> but next up, we are moving on to the calibrated skulk sensor. And what is a calibrated skulk sensor, you may be wondering? This is a calibrated skulk sensor. A skulk sensor with an amethyst sticking out of its top. How you craft one of these? Slap a skulk sensor into the crafting table, put three amethyst shards around it, and boom, a calibrated skulk sensor. And you might be wondering, what do you do with this? Is it for decoration, or does it serve a functional purpose in life? Like we all do. <laughs> okay, forget the philosophicalness. No, the reason why this has a functional purpose is because if you attach a different redstone signal to this thing, it is calibrated to different sounds, which is a great feature. And now I will show you its other great feature. And what is that other amazing feature you may be wondering? Well, all you need to do is slap an amethyst block right next to this thing, and then watch this. It sends the signals back and forth. Now, this can travel over thousands of blocks if you have these every so often. Which means that we basically have the internet in Minecraft. The possibilities are endless. You can literally have an entire system of anything operated from thousands of blocks away without the use of command blocks just by using these little guys which is absolutely phenomenal in my opinion and I can't wait to, to find some amazing ways to use these now next up is hanging signs and these right here are hanging signs so they're signs and they're hanging by chains another great way of decorating but no there's more these signs are phenomenal in my opinion you can put them next to things you can put them under things and they dangle everywhere. Like, this is a whole nother way of telling a story with your Minecraft world. And, get this, you can even hang them from each other at varying angles. <laughs> I love this so much. There's a new feature added to signs in general, where if you type in whatever the heck this is, and then right-click again, you can change it to spell something even more stupid. No, but like literally, you can now edit signs by just right clicking on them. And you need to write a different message on the back, like this. And then no one will know unless they look behind it. And you can just keep editing these or you could use some good old fashioned honeycomb and then it's impossible. You cannot change this message. And you can not change the message on the other side either. So, by using just some honeycomb, you cannot access this whatsoever. Or you and you can always use an axe to undo this poor life choice. I absolutely love hanging signs. I think they're great. But do you know what's something better than hanging signs? Something that I've forgotten about up until this point in this video. Well, buckle your brains in. It's time for the chiseled bookshelf. This is by far my favorite feature in the newest update. Why? Because now bookshelves serve a purpose. You can put books onto them and then you can right click it to get them back. It actually has a purpose. No one will use regular bookshelves ever again except for when you need to. And then you can always put in enchanted books that are put also as the exact same colors as the regular books so you won't know which is enchanted and which isn't. That is very odd. I think that's a glitch with my game. But either way, this is amazing. And why? Because now you can create the classic trick where you just pull a bookshelf off of the shelf and a secret passageway opens up. I don't know why, but that's just something I've always wanted in Minecraft. And now it's finally coming true. And don't worry if this video is starting to get long. There's only one more feature left, and it's something that... And now, guys, we move on to the final feature of this video, the bamboo. Finally, so many people have wanted this. I didn't even know the community wanted this until this came out. And now, you can actually craft bamboo blocks. So you have the regular bamboo. Looks nice and green. Could be made into a cactus, I guess. Maybe. I'm not really sure. Makes a cool sound. Kind of sounds like a really weird door opening, like, oh, I'm knocking on your door. <laughs> it really just sounds like you're knocking on someone's door. <laughs> uh, anyone in there? <laughs> That's amazing. Anyway, you can then make it into a stripped bamboo, which actually looks like yellowish, 
and you can craft blocks out of that. Like the door, the trap door, it has like a nice Japanese style to it, I really like that. You have the planks, which look like they're made of bamboo, and then you have the bamboo mosaic, which has absolutely no logic to it whatsoever, it's just a random pattern. Actually, I don't think that's how it works, but it looks like a random pattern. Look at this. It's very, very weird. Very, very strange. Very, very odd. And super cool. And then the most important thing of all that has come from this. A raft! <laughs> Look at this thing! Oh my gosh, it's amazing! There are little reeds. And yes, you can ride it. And also, your arms do not move. Please, Mojang, if you're watching this video, make the arms move so you're not, like, telekinetically controlling this. Ah, yes. With my new bamboo raft, I have mind powers! I can control the very oars that my hands aren't barely even touching with my mind! Ah ha ha Oh my gosh! My head also can rotate 360 degrees, apparently. That is, uh, cursed. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I have shown you guys all the cool features of 1.20. There will be more videos coming out on this topic soon. If you have any suggestions, please say so in the comments section down below. Please don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And, uh, I will catch you next time. Sayonara, Ayanara. And for those of you listening at this very point, at the end of this video, the videos that are coming are going to be great, and they are an S-tier board of the all of the things in this amazing mod, and maybe an Armatrums video, if you guys are looking forward to it. Maybe. 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 What is happening to that squid? Maybe. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed these little secrets, and uh, I will catch you next time. Sayonara, Ayanara. Bye-bye. As I run back and forth and rant, I will continue onwards.